Hello and welcome to another episode of Judge by That Dude in Blue with me, David. We haven't done this series in a while, it's one of my favorite series to make, so I thought we'd bring it back and keep on going. So today, no rules, typical thing where you email me at judgebytdib at gmail.com and I give you my opinion on your project. So basically we're to go through the emails, see what I like and see what I don't like. But before we get started, I just wanted to give a huge thanks to our sponsor today, Vincero. Vincero's create exceptionally crafted timepieces at a fair price and their products are bold, uncompromising and quite literally the best value in the watch industry. Selling directly to you guys, they're able to provide the same look and feel of a luxury watch, but that's 10 times the price of Vincero's. We've received over 15,000 five-star reviews and they have free worldwide shipping. Their goal is to show that quality is about attention to detail and a commitment to never take shortcuts and always over deliver at a fair price. They actually offer six collections for men and four collections for women. Vincero wants to inspire as many people as possible to elevate their game and they want it to be a daily reminder to never stop and never settle. Vincero is here to make you feel unstoppable and it makes you feel and look good when you're walking down the street. I've already gotten several compliments about my watch and yeah, it feels pretty good. <laughs> so make sure to check out the link in the description below and use the code BLUE for 15% off an entire order with free worldwide shipping. And find the watch that helps you take on your day. Hi, my name is Brody, I'm 15 and I'm from New Zealand. This is my Rotary KE30 project. I have a 12 12A rotary and some work Eclipse O1s to put on the car, and I hope you read this. Well, good news for you today, Brody. I'm reading it. <laughs> so we're gonna take, a, okay, wheels are kind of interesting. I've always been on the fence about the cross kind of shaped wheels. I mean, it's not as bad as like SN95 three spokes or anything like that, but the Eclipse look pretty good. But let's look at the Corolla. Oh, it's one of those Corollas. Okay, I don't really see them that often, but it makes me think of an event I go to almost every year called World Cup Finals. It's import versus domestic, and people from Puerto Rico will ship their cars all the way to Maryland and drag race us. So it's almost like the mainland versus Puerto Rico, which is super cool. It's so cool to see the rotaries in these kind of cars because they're so light and I've seen these things run crazy fast quarter mile times. I'm talking like under eight seconds at times, but very cool Brody. Thank you so much for sending in all the way from New Zealand. This is from Robin. Hi David, I'm 17 years old. I'm from Estonia and this is my Lada 2101. I needed a lot of work, but luckily the body of the car didn't have a lot of rust. So ready for racing the summer. Sorry if my English is not great. Okay, let's take a look at this. Oh wow, they really did start with nothing. So let's, oh, okay. So they went from this to this to, whoa. They did the underbody too? Like did they, they flipped it over and cleaned everything up? Wow. And it's so weird to think as car people that we're kind of like in our own little world in the United States, right? We're kind of allowed to modify, even though on paper we're not supposed to, but we do it anyway and it's not very enforced. But you think about around the world, all these people trying their very best with what resources they have and what country they're from to do what we do, which is incredible. I just love that about the car community, that it's universal. And you can see that they went from this to this, I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, that's pretty incredible that it's all in their garage too, which is really dope. Oh man, <laughs> that's really bad. Like if I saw that for sale, I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole. So Robin, that's impressive. Hello, dude in blue. Oh, there's a hair in front of my face. Hold on. <laughs> Hello, dude in blue. I drive a 1988 300ZX Turbo. The car was purchased in 2015. It was a long process. And here are some picks. Do a review because the Z31 is totally forgotten. So the Z31, I've had a lot of opportunities to do, but a lot of the times they break down or they're kind of far away. So it's just more of a scheduling thing. The Z31 300ZX, you can definitely tell is the granddad of the next one, the Z32, which is one of my favorite cars. Cars I've driven from Japan in this era. And the 300ZX is really cool because it really did show leaps and bounds in Japan's technology. When you get inside the Z32 especially, you see the gauge pods and everything. It feels very spaceship-like inside and it does not feel of its era at all. Dan Tube says, my 1985 Subaru Brumby. What's the Brumby? Is that 
Oh, it's a brat. Okay, it's essentially a Subaru brat. I don't know a lot about these weird one-off cars Subaru did. I did drive the Vivio, which was super cool, but I never have seen a brat in person, I don't think ever. But it's so interesting seeing a dirt bike in the back, but the car itself looks like it's in really good shape and it's in its natural territory. Oh wait, he's got a video, hold on. Crispy, hold on. <laughs> well, you seem to enjoy it, good sir. <laughs> but it's so weird hearing that boxer-ish kind of sound coming out of like an El Camino looking thing. Such a weird car that Subaru built, really strange. Hey David, I started this project back in August of 2018. It started as a rolling chassis, chassis, excuse me, and pile of parts. I've never worked or built any cars before, so it's a first, but it isn't turning out too bad. My goal is to have it road legal here in Norway. God, the amount of people we're getting globally now is so cool. So, you know, let's look at a 240 or a 200, excuse me, in Norway. Oh, you can definitely tell with the language right here. That's really cool. Reparjan Pagar. <laughs> I have no idea how to say that. <laughs> wow, this like brings me back to when I started my first 240 project. Oh my God though, look at his engine bay setup though. It looks really nice. Interior looks decent, no cracks on the dash. I think it's because it's so cloudy there in Norway all the time. Cause it's usually just sun baking on the plastic. But no, that, wow, what a long way that thing came. Like from the pictures before all the way to here. He's got a video and it's on Google Drive so I can just play it. Let's see what he did. Oh, it wants to live. Oh, he has the glow, the glow shift gauges too. I have those in my car. <laughs> it wants to run. It's got oil pressure. It's got all that. Dude, wait, look at that man's beard. Is that a beard? <laughs> Been watching your videos for a while, really hoping to make it into one and get your opinion critique away. All right, so 1987 Camaro LT355 swap. So, oh wow, really, really blue lights. You don't really see a lot of these done up anymore. A friend of mine did back in Virginia, but the LT1 motor is something I don't have a lot of knowledge about, so I'm not gonna sit here and kind of pretend that I do. As most people just told me, if you have the opportunity to choose LT over LS, you choose LS, and that's kind of a nutshell opinion, and I know that's not fair to Chevy people, so I apologize. But the car itself looks like it's in very good condition. It doesn't look like it's been very beat up, and you don't see a lot of them with good paint like that pretty much ever. But look at that, it's like, bone stock. Quick story about a Bel Air. One time I was driving down the street and my friend Zach was with me. You might remember Zach with the blue hatch, but Zach was with me and we were cruising down the main street of where I used to live in Virginia. And there was a beautiful red Bel Air, but it had drag radials, like steamroller sized on the back. And we pull up next to him in my Mustang and he says, bet you won't win. And we both look at each other. We go, yeah, bet we won't. <laughs> so he just nails it, goes all the way down the street, burn it rubber all the way down the street, pull up next to him, you know, giant blower on it, huge engine. And he was like, I've had it since I was 16 years old and he never got rid of it. The Bel Air seems like it's one of those cars that people just never get rid of if it's in their family. Very pretty though. My name is wrong. And these are my two daily drivers. First is my 1977 F-150. Look at that. So when it comes to trucks, I'm not very educated either, but trucks are one of those things I've noticed that whenever I do a video on a truck, people love it. People love trucks, especially in the United States, and that thing is absolutely beautiful. I would drive that. It looks awesome. Oh, and then you got the classic SN95 New Edge, and that looks, oh, oh it's a Mach 1, excuse me. And this Mach 1 looks freaking great because if you notice, they had the floating pony emblem in the grill, and then they had this chin spoiler right here, front splitter, whatever you want to call it. However, I did that grill and that chin splitter on my normal Mustang GT. I guess you could call me a poser. <laughs> by Daniel N14 Pulsar is my current daily. It has SR18DE and five speed. Pulsar is a car that I've always wanted to drive. The Pulsar GT IR, I believe it's called, with the SR20 and all wheel drive. He had this riced out Integra and then he converted it back to not being riced out. So that's pretty cool. He went from this to this. 
and the interior looks freaking flawless. I love the wheel. Nice, nice choice of wheel, nice interior. There's the block and there's the Pulsar. Wow, the, I didn't realize how different the normal Pulsar looked from the GTIR. Hey David, I'm a big fan of yours. Here are my dad's cars because I'm only 14 and can't drive a car yet. Malaysian hatchback called the Perodia, Perodua, Perodua Axia, which is rice. This is a 2016 model. It's the first eco car for the company. Let's look at it. Okay, I've never seen one of these before. Oh, the Optimus Prime. No. Oh, they zoomed in on it. God dang it. <laughs> I love how whenever I say something that I don't like, there's always a close up photo of it. Oh man, it's got seat cover. No. No. <laughs> Type R in weird font. Whoa, what is this? That's cool. Wait, look. This is what I also included some pictures of our other cars. It's a Morris Minor 1000, which is my grandpa's car, and a BMC Mini Moke. That is cool. Sorry, you can't review these cars because these cars are in a tropical island called Sri Lanka. I'll to, I'm good butchering pronunciation today. I'm so sorry. Why does he have... Oh, okay, because it's a Toyota. He put Lexus badges on it? What are you doing? Come on, I understand where you're going with this, but would you put an infinity symbol on a 350Z? Okay, I see where you're going for. You're going for white and blue all the way around. That looks like a less modern version of my friend CJ's Corvette. Sorry, CJ. <laughs> Tell me what you think, bro, instead, if I'm riced out or not. And yes, my car is boosted. All right, so let's look. Scion TC with an intercooler I mean, he's got tire lettering. He's got these little over fenders here. The wing, I think, is a little much. I personally wouldn't have a wing that tall on the TC. I think maybe a duck bill right here would be kind of nice, but I personally wouldn't have that giant wing, but to each their own. It seems like it's kind of trend right now to do the big spoiler. But the over fenders could be worse, honestly. They could be really, really they could be done just awful, but those don't look too bad. And if they're for fitment, I understand. But this trim piece right here isn't too bad. It looks like you kind of retrofitted something. But the actual display of the car, oh no, you were so close. I cannot tell if that hood vent is functional or not. If it's functional, I mean, why not? But I don't really like how it looks personally, but the fact that you're boosted almost saves your entire car in my opinion, <laughs> but that's just me. Thank you so much, Isaac, for sending that in. Guys, I finally found the perfect car to describe the dirty self. This. <laughs> He's got the Confederate flag. He's got, you know what? I was gonna say even to non-car people, but to all car people around the world, you menace to society for sure. Straight pipe, no performance mods, just pure rice redneck. Well, the good thing is you own it. So I'm not even mad. From Blake, a little rice a day makes the pain go away. <laughs> this is my 2002 Honda Accord stock F23 with, of course, ricer mods. eBay cold air header, <laughs> Megan test pipe, okay. Okay, the front fender is a different color from the rest of the car, we're on a good start. Oh, the whole front bumper is, okay. So what was your motivation to just do the front this color and not kind of keep going? That's what I've always wondered when people do mismatched panels. Not so much it's, oh, I'm on a budget and I can't afford to change the rest of the car. I understand that, but you already did the first part of the car, so why not keep going? Oh, that's how it started, okay. You, you even had the purple lugs before you started everything. <laughs> You're just like, it's okay. First mod, gonna be awesome. <laughs> okay, well it's definitely transformed. I will say that. Do the rest of their car. Oh my God, that light bar. It's so funny when I do these judge by that dude blues, I always like go into it and I start and then the more I stare at it, I'm like, oh my God, I noticed something else and then something else, but that light bar is ridiculous. Hi David, my name is Jackson. I am from Australia. I am 15 and heavily into car racing. What is this? Okay, so this is a 76 Chrysler Galant and an 07 Ford Focus XR5 Turbo, or the ST. 76 Chrysler GD Galant is going to be my daily driver. It's now been registered since I've taken photos. 
and I am the only the second owner from the car. Wait, it was a barn find had sat for 20 years. So let's look at this. I mean, if it was sitting in a barn for 20 years and it came out like this, then it's freaking fantastic, honestly. I can see that there's a little bit of right here that's signs of sitting a while, but, but I was so jealous of other countries getting the Ford Focus RS with the Volvo engine in it, and also this one, because I would love to have the one with the Volvo engine in it, because that was such an interesting car. But the XR5 Turbo was still a very cool car. I will say though, Anybody who sends in emails from Australia, I salute you because your modified car laws are absolutely ridiculous and borderline oppressive. Hello, my name is Anton and I am from Sweden. This is my daily and fun car. It's a Saab Nam 3 Vector from 2003 with a Garrett Turbo on it. Oh, look at that. I mean, that thing's clean. I love the fighter jet picture. That's a great picture though. You know, you don't see that car here in the States that often done up like this. I mean, it's very tasteful. It looks very nice. The arrow in the car, the side skirts, the bumpers, the lips, all that kind of stuff. He really nailed it. I mean, that's a, I like that. You know, you don't see a lot of subs here that you're like, wow, I want to drive that to somebody who drives something normal, if that makes sense. Like the normal car community standards are like the muscle cars and the imports and stuff like that. But you don't hear about a lot of people doing really fast or really clean looking sobs anymore because parts are hard to find as well. Thanks for sending that in. That was really cool. Hey mate, love your videos. Recently subscribed. I'm from Western Australia and I've just finished converting, building and restoring this Land Rover. Did it in just over a year. Okay, so that must be when they got it. Okay. Oh my God, look at the difference. That's so cool. Whenever I think Land Rover, I think Australia, because I think of the Outback and off-roading and all, like, all that kind of stuff, excuse me. But no, that thing is so cool. What's the rest of the story? It has a fully reconditioned 3.9 liter V8, which we rebuilt ourselves with a stage two cam and Holly carburetor. Few bits of finish, but what do you think so far? Honestly, like I said before, really cool. Thanks for sending that in. Sadly, I don't like to boast about my car because it's a classic, Classic key example of the GTR generation. I hope you like it. The R33, okay. What is your guys' opinion about the R33? I think that's gonna be the subject of today's comment section. The R33 personally, like this one with the kind of diffuser bumper you see right here, I love it. I absolutely adore the R33, but most people seem to go, no, the R32 or the R34 is a way better looking car. And I think it's, I think it looks great, I don't know. I think it's of its era, I think it's of its time. I do believe that the R32 is more timeless than the R33, I can totally admit that. Same with the R34, that car style-wise, I don't think it's ever gonna go out of style. 33 is kind of the wild car because a lot of people say it's a nicer Zinke 240 up front, which I totally get why people say that. This is my 2012 Hyundai Accent, AKA the little accent that could. All right, so let's take a gander. Oh my God, he's got a toe strap and everything. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot that Ontario has front plate law. Man, I don't miss that from Virginia. I mean, the toe strap and everything is interesting. I wish I could see some more of the back of the car, but your wheels on the side, everything kind of matches and goes together. The banner doesn't look tacky. That all looks nice. And hey, look at the bright side. If you ever want to track it and get stuck in a ditch, you'll be just fine. <laughs> A little accent that could. Thank you, Nick. Car dude, I am a car dude from Norway. Love your content. Good work, dude. I got two cards. Judge them, please. That is a beautiful Volkswagen, though. God, that looks good. You can tell kind of the extended body lines right here and the color choices. Gold wheels, in my opinion, are really hard to pull off, but he pulled them off on this car because of the contrast of the green. And then G-Wagon. I did a review of one of these and I did not think it was worth how much it was. I do think it's a great off-roading vehicle. And we also did the fun bridge thing over in California, which was really interesting to show the capabilities of its off-roading. But when it comes to like just driving around town and stuff, you can find an SUV just as nice. Honestly, I think for much cheaper, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. Oh, we got a Crown Vic. 
Auto, okay, Crown Vicks, dude, super underrated. I feel like more people should take advantage of the auctions with Crown Vicks, because you can turn them into track toys for nearly dirt cheap. You know, after we did the $1,000 BMW drift car, I really am a believer of budget track builds. You can totally do it. And the Crown Vic has a V8 in it. It's not the best V8 in the world, but it has a V8 in it. It's a sturdy V8 in it and they'll run forever if you take care of them. And this does not look too bad. I like it. I've actually seen some people turbo them and put nitrous in them before. Oh, look, he got an award. That's pretty cool. All right, you guys, what do you think about some of the cars we looked at today? What was your favorite one? Because I can't wait to keep doing this again. The R33 is definitely up there on today's list, but some of the cars from overseas, those are really cool to me because of how exotic they feel to me because they're not here. I guess that makes sense to somebody, okay? But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I will see you guys next time.